Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are we all doing? Hey there, next programming, hey there, Buff Overflow, how are you guys doing? <clears throat> so, last stream we basically put 65,000 spheres on the screen. Um, and yeah, you can see it looks quite laggy on the screen. That's because we're CPU bound, pushing 65,000 objects on a single thread to the GPE. Um, but here's the real cost on the GPE, right? It's about 4.7 MS for the ray tracer to go over all those objects. And about one millisecond at most for the tile binner. Um, so we was trying to make this sphere ray tracer do less work last stream by perhaps sorting the spheres and earlying out. Um, but I want to tackle it from a different end today um, and just try and give it less spheres to render basically uh, but yeah they can speak a code today I guess so I guess I guess so I get yeah how's it going there, Chris uh, yeah I'm not bad I'm bad been a little bit tired lately um, but other than that pretty good Things are going good. Um, but yeah, winter is here as well. No, I didn't fit. We're not, we're going to take a break on the sorting purely because it, it, it's going to be used, but it's not going to give us massive numbers. And I want to try and try and do the thing which gives us massive numbers. Like the sorting alone isn't going to help us. Um, and we're going to explain why, like, part of the reason is, is can you see this tile binner? Sometimes it will drop down to 0, 0.0, sorry, sometimes it drop down to 0 0.4 ms, and other times it will spike up to about 1.2 ms. Like, that's, that's not good to have that. And the reason why is because it does a bunch of atomic, um, uh, atomic uh, ads in the same area and on the same pixels and it and it's not deterministic so just ha randomly it will maybe jump up by a whole ms right um and it, when it's perfect it's down to 0 0.4 ms um so yeah and then uh I think the sorting, the thing to keep an eye of though is the sorting should reduce this ray tracer down by a bunch, hopefully. Maybe half it. But yeah. Uh, we're going to work on something else today though, and that is something that will come before the tar binning and the ray tracer stage. We're going to work on something called a, um, an occlusion buffer. So the idea is with, with each of these guys is 25 by 25 by 25 spheres. So all in all, that's about 65,000 things on screen. Actually, some of them go off screen, but anyway. Um, so the, the problem is, is we break these into screen tiles, right? So you can imagine there's a bunch of tiles that cover the whole screen. Um, and the problem is for one tile, we kind of want to have a limit of 64 spheres because if you go I think we've got um I forgot we've hard coded the number to be um we've hard coded the number to be 256 right now and that's part of the reason why it's probably so slow in that um in that shader Let's see if we can run it that's probably why it's nearly 4ms here if we run it with like you know uh four times less Oh, it's about the same, actually. No, did I recompile that? There we go. Okay, it drops about 1 ms off, but you get a lot more artifacts. The reason why you get these is because the tiles are being filled up with different spheres every frame. So it's only rendering those spheres. So the idea is we want to make, make it so we can render or have a list of at 64. And we'll be able to tell if a sphere is occluded or not. Um, well, we can, we'll be able to say this thing is definitely occluded, but not um, like, 
So we should be able to, before we add it to the tile, we can say, is this sphere occluded? And we can, we, we can get an answer back saying, yes, this is definitely occluded. But we can't get an answer back saying, no, it's not definitely, uh, we can't say it's not, um, like, it's basically like a, we can be certainly sure, but we can't be certainly unsure that it's not occluded, right? Um, that's the idea. So we'll probably have some spheres, which, so most of the spheres like that are really far in the background, those will get completely occluded. Um, although those are definitely occluded and those ones won't be added to the list for the tile. And the ones which are just behind the ones in the front, the front sort of will probably get rent, try to get rendered, but the ones behind those probably won't get rendered. And that's what we're going to work on today. Um, if that answers your question. Um, so we'll be saving the sorting for a future stream, basically. Um, cause this one will bring the numbers down by a whole load more. Um, right. So something I need quickly is I need to add support for texture views because we don't, um, we need to, to be able to render to different MIP levels and you can't access MIP levels individually in shaders. So we're just going to quickly go into the GPU abstraction, just right in those. And then we'll uh, go over on the Discord. I went over and wrote basically a whole plan of how the thing's going to work. So we'll go over that, we'll draw it up after we've got this MIP level thing in. So it's all here. So we'll go over this and I'll draw it so it all makes sense. Um, and we should, we might get, we might get like as far as this today. Like this, these are the steps we've already done basically. So we might be able to do it today, we'll see. Hey there, Sully, how's it going? How you been? So we're gonna add texture view, initialize, debug name. Um, you need the type. No, you don't need the type. You need a resource ID. This is your alias, or the one you're aliasing. Um, And then you need um, probably base MIP level. I don't know why I did array layers second because array layers are more, work on more things. Base array layer. Okay, so we just add this in. GPU, GPU, C. So, um, you need to be able to get the current resource. Uh, GPU, resource get. Just going full re 24-7. Using Clang D. Yeah, we use Clang D. Um, yeah, it's all right. <clears throat> it works most of the time, but then sometimes it messes up on the suggestions. Yeah, what would you mean going for re? What's that about? Hey, LCT, how you doing? I think Doom Eternal uses a similar idea. They build a min-max bounds for each tile, as far as I recall and bound, not just spheres, but geometry with hexa, hedra. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, the, the, everything I remember seeing that one, actually, they do a software render of that hexa, hedra thing, don't they? And they call things. Yeah. It's, a, it's pretty good, I think. Well, yeah, it's definitely gonna help reduce our numbers. Um, but I just am concerned about how much. I think it should be 
I'm hoping it'll be good enough because we're going to do an, an estimate, basically. Um, so we'll see it all. Um, yeah, so resource type, not equal to buffer. Oh, alias, alias, not alias. Should be pretty easy to jam this thing in. Um, so basically your MIP, your MIP level, your base MIP level must be less than, your base MIP level plus MIP levels must be less than, uh, or equal to resource, Texture dot MIP levels. Yep. Um, MIP level range out of bounds. Some of that. Um, yeah, I, I could be more. I could provide more information here, but I'm just good being lazy. I could provide the specific ones. Um, but I want to just get this in because we've got more important stuff to do. And if it's a problem in the future, we'll just uh, make it. We'll put proper format args in there, you know, um, layers. Um, right, so MIP levels and that can be zero. We're gonna automate that. The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna say if, if MIP levels is equal to zero, we'll do the whole sort of like, um, MIP levels equals resource texture MIP levels take base take one I think uh, so if you've got why oh, is no take one sorry and that's array layer same for the array layer all right so that sets up all of those. We've got to add, then we allocate a new thing. We need to add a new little field in here. Well, we just say go all the way, oh, by the way, this thing can have an alias, alias res ID. Voila. Um, so we've got to call the new backend function. So you allocate yourself a new one from the object pool. Then this time you set alias res id alias res id boom then this will just get all the same fields from the uh, previous one you can actually do a different format uh, but that but you don't have to do it um for us we don't need it so we're just not going to do it but if we need it we'll obviously do it in the future And there we go. So now it's got to call the backend function initialize texture view, which we'll just add. So it's basically going to be a copy of this one, and we'll just do the texture view part and not the um, yeah, the image view, not just VK image, uh, not VK image as well, right? Um, GPU, GPU Vulkan, right? So we'll basically just steal the code. So it's after the bind memory bit, right? Because the standard one, it uh, creates an image, right? And then it allocates some memory for it. And then it will bind the memory to the image and then create the image view. The image view is how you do your sub resource stuff, which is what we want to do of different ones, right? So, we're just going to do that. Oh, they're doing a computer, they? Sweet. Yeah, I think that's the one I saw. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good presentation. I only saw the slides, though. I didn't see the video for it. Um, 
So we get a thing called resource backend. Now resource backend hasn't got the, um, yeah, we need to go, Right, so we need to also get the alias resource backend and copy some of the stuff over, right? Um, resource alias here. Yeah. So we go to the backend, it's just got the essential stuff, right? So we need to copy the device memory and the VK image bit over, right? Um, so this is in a union, right? And because it's texture, it's just the image guys, right? Um, so we need to copy this one and this one, and we create another one of this one because um, it's a different sub-portion of the image. Um, so we just do resource backend VK image. Wait, wrong way around. Ali, oh no, that's right. Alias, yeah. Then device memory and device memory. We just have to be careful when we deallocate those we don't destroy them. So yeah, we haven't done the destroy. So that's fine. Sweet. Um, so we get the format. Now this is where we do the magic, right? We haven't got the base layer, the base, the base, um, MIP level in there, have we? So we need to go to here. Base. Base. So these are only set for the views, obviously. Um, so we need to make sure we set those. So it's here. Um, cool. So then this would just literally be copy that, put it there, put the word base before it, and then right, create image view. Why is this one complaining? Use of under oh, VK result, okay. It expects VK results to be declared. Does all the error handling. Hey, they're not so red. Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. How you doing? How you doing? I'm a little bit, a little bit tired still, but I got myself a tea in the Daddy Bear cup. So it should be more awake very soon. Right, so now we've got this image view stuff. We can now create image views and we, we're gonna need this for the occlusion buffer that we're gonna be doing. Um, there's one more thing that we'll need and we're gonna go ahead and do that as well and then we'll get into the, the, the plan and then we'll execute the plan. Um, because I, I need these things uh, so we can just start and do it and it'll just be easy to have them them done, you see. Um, okay, so that's in. The next thing to get in is, um, so we go to the G, so what I want, what, what, I want, what do I want to do? I want to, you know the, yeah. So we wanna take away this test scene that we've got for a minute and restore the other test scene. And that one just allows us to see a few spheres at different distances. And I had that scene so we can calculate the bounding box. We've got to calculate a different bounding box today. Um, and hopefully we can get a good, a good one, like a good, uh... so let's just rest put the scene back. So we used to get the outer axis line bounding box and it had to be outer so it had to be on the outside of the sphere because then we could 
bin it into a tile, screen tile. Now we have to get the innermost rectangle and it has to be inner. Every pixel has to be on the inside. Or every bounds has to be on the inside of the sphere. Um, and we need this so we can do the occlusion buffer. Because that's our best guess, basically, is that bounding box. So bring this guy back. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. I didn't blow up. Excellent. So these are the, the test spheres. We're going to make them fully white. And we can uh, test this out. Hey, Cranston. How you doing? I think the term is cluster rendering or at least some of that. Yeah, cluster shading. Yeah, that they do with the there. Yeah, it might have been their forward, their forward uh, plus renderer, wasn't it? Think it too. Sweet, glad to hear. Has everyone's uh, clocks changed? Yeah. Yeah, I think forward plus is quite cool. Like, you know, I'm not really, I'm not sure how I feel about like, the G buffer approach, but I know I'm definitely not a fan of like temporal stuff, you know, like TAA um, and like where you reproject your frames and stuff. Um, I find that stuff ex Oh, and also when you like accumulate light over many frames. I'm not really a fan of that sort of stuff because it feels like a hack. It's, so, it's fine for some things, but if you're seeing changes rapidly, it's, it's off. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. They do hybrid rendering so they can set the best approach based on the depth discontinuity on each tile. Hmm. Uh. So these are min max. I was just thinking about doing a max for culling. Is that what you need? Yeah, yeah, it's just a collision. I, why, why do they need a min? For some. Uh, hmm. Let's think about that one. So we're going to make the. Minimax for lighting, right. I guess that makes sense, right? Yeah, because you've got the... Mm. All right, so let's make them all white so we can actually see the spheres, right? <clears throat> so now, <clears throat> if we enable the debug code here, um, this one shows you the, sc the screen bounds, so we can bin it into a tile. This gets an outer bounds, right? It's a kind of a best, a rough guess. It's very cheap to do it. That's what makes it great. Now, I've obviously got some wastage. We need to do the opposite. This is outer, we need inner. So we need one that goes on the inside. So we're gonna, we're gonna do some of that. You need overlaps with the lights. Yeah, lighting is something I need to do after we've figured out what's our rendering, how we're gonna render stuff. Because I need to have good light. Uh, I need to have, you know, a game needs good lighting. Wait, oh, sorry, page five. Um. Oh, is this not the Doom one? Oh, this is a different one. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this one. Um, right, okay. So told deferred. Production proven that for faster and classic deferred. Oh, they said tile it. Right, cons of cl classic, transparency, MSAA. Yeah. Custom materials, yeah. Flying models, less modular than... Right. So it's just faster with the tiled approach, fair play. Clustered shading. Right. 
Um, pre Z pass. Yeah, you need a good pre Z pass, isn't it? Like a yeah, so you can call 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 things. Yeah. Yeah, I think we need to call things regardless. But yeah, that's a good. Yeah, because we're just trying to push so many objects. But maybe it might be because... Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. So I want to copy and paste this, right? And make a new one. So this is the outer screen bounds. Sphere, outer screen bounds. Then we need sphere, inner, inner screen bounds. So we'll get out the drawing board and we'll modify this one. Should be quite easy. So here we go. Get the black, get the blackboard. So this is what we did before, right? Um, yeah, something like that. Good. So we just did a, a bounding box and just took the two most important corners. Now we need to do another, a different bounding box where it's going on the inside, right? Okay and just take the two most important corners. I think it'll be these guys. I'm not sure though. That's why I've got a test scene. So we're just gonna do it and just see if it, it works, right? So how do we get this? Um, well, it's fear, it's fear. Um, yeah, it's sphere center plus a minus radius basically. Wait a minute. It's not really radius. It's it's yeah. It's the normalized vector there times by radius gets you there. Um, should be it. So effectively, yeah, something like that. Yep. Also mentions cones. Ooh. Yeah, I need to take a read of this. It's so hard to find stuff on the internet nowadays. Like you punch them into Google and you just get like you just don't get the stuff you're looking for. You have to be looking elsewhere and then you come across something or talk to people and people are like, Oh yeah, have you seen this thing? And you're like, I never would have found that. Um, I remember the days where I used to be able to find stuff. I don't know if that's because I'm searching for more niche stuff nowadays. It's probably both, right? And, or, um, yeah, Google's just got worse. Um, or the internet's filled with more crap, you know. Uh, it's probably a bunch of things. Humus, public stuff. It's someone's day but pure gold. Fair play, I've never... Right, I'll take a look at the whole thing, <laughs> the whole site then. Yep. That's cool, thank you. I really like gigabytes of stuff saved offline because that's a good idea. Control S. Should do that. Oh, this is good. So... Should be a walk in the park, right? Um, all we need is a vector. So yes, it's just offset, right? So um, we don't really need to normalize it because I can normalize it myself. Marless. Um, so the numbers are, it's 0 0.5 something. I can't remember the numbers. Um, shoot, 0 0.5, um, you know what, 
I got this. Two seconds. One, one, one. <laughs> um, norm. Oh. All right. S dot radius. So I can just use H GPU H print F. Um, just call it T. No reason really. Um, right, CX, CY, CZ. So I just want to pre compute it. I forgot it's 0 0.56 something. I forgot the numbers. I know the 2D one, it's 0 0.7071. But yeah, 3D one escapes me. Right, that'll do it. Let's give it a run. There's my boy. This one. Five, seven, seven, three, five. Okay, that's kind of easy to remember. All right. Um, so yeah, I've got this offset and then I add, that should be it, right? I don't know, we'll see. Right, that's actually really bad. Uh, oh yeah, because you're doing negative. Negative Z. That puts you up. Uh, that puts you back towards the camera. Right, that's better. It is going out of bounds though. Shoot. So we're taking the wrong corners. Um, so the whole idea with this occlusion buffer is we need a box that absolutely is fully inside the sphere. And then we can say this area is definitely definitely include something and then we can put that information into a texture and then we can use that texture to know if something behind it is, is occluded right um, but this doesn't count because it's not getting occluded here um, and that will cause problems Yeah, I've downloaded this paper's directory filled with obscure named FPSs. Oh, sorry, PDFs. Yep, definitely. Yeah, like 0 0.979. <laughs> Dot .pdf. No. Yeah. I have a single file extension to download web pages because I can't just anything it saves online. No, you can't actually. There's a lot of stuff that goes off. There's a lot of dead links. Yeah, it's a good idea. All right, so obviously it works perfect down the center, just about. Um, but as soon as things get distorted enough, um, but it doesn't work perfect down the center, you can see. So let's think about it and see what we're doing. So we're taking hmm. so in a bounds. Um, hmm. Maybe a higher field of view. Should we draw that one? Let's give it a go. 
So let's do something like this. Proper wide. With, let's put sphere all the way over here. And we're doing uh, brush. So and you've got a box on the inside. That's aligned to the near plane. So it's axis aligned to the near plane. Um, and then we take the two most important corners, say the lower left, the lower, the lower back left. Uh, we're going back to here again. See, it might not be easy to see in 2D. There's also... That seems fine, right? It seems like you're always on the inside here, at least. But I guess if you add a third dimension to it. Let's double check the code quick. She was saying, go to the right. Um, okay, camera origin to sphere. Um, okay, I don't need to normalize that again, just saying. Do that. That can't be a problem, right? Okay, good. Um, then we're saying the offset from the center of the sphere um, is to the right, up, and backward times that by radius and then your min is taking that away going to the lower left and then the max is going going top right yeah yeah it's adding um, yep yeah, seems pretty sensible to me um, Yeah. Top right, lower left. Doesn't account for the top left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the back left and the front the front top right. Those are the way we define the box. Uh but the upper Wait. Yeah, we need to include all the corners in on it or something. Are we taking the wrong... Yeah, I think we're taking the wrong corners. We should be taking, rather than the front right, top right, we should be taking the front bottom right. Wait, which one is it? Because there's eight corners. Yeah, let's go figure that one out. Right, so this would just be the opposite of this one. So we're taking this one up here. Wait, how are we taking that one down there and why is it off? Probably because of translating the center position, that's why. Right. I don't know what's going on. So we're translating the min max and then this. Uh, so we're doing a bit of a trick where we save calculating like each of the corners. Uh, the corners are different depending on what, what side of the screen if it's, it's on. Right. 
If it's in the top right side of the screen, it's, it's the lower left and top right corner. If it's the uh, if it's the bottom right corner, it's the top left and bottom right corner, and it just rotates around, right? Top left, it will be top left and bottom right corner. Um, and those are the important corners. So they used to be on the outside one. But on the inner AABB, they're probably different corners, but... Yeah. Um, but yeah, we saved... We had, had a trick where because the screen you can like the screen is most distorted in all of the corners we basically just absolute the coordinate and only deal with the one corner so that came at a bit of a price it's a little bit of a hack where it's actually a little it's not precise because we take the min max calculate the half dimensions in screen space or something or whatever in eclipse space so it's already been projected onto a flat screen. And then we bring our position from world space all the way back into screen space. And because of the field of, the field of view, it's enough to be offset. Yeah. yeah, it's enough. Bring about the center position is enough to sort of offset this thing. You see this should be up here and this should be in here. There's enough to sort of move the whole thing over by a bit. Um, so what we should really be doing is taking the min max, bringing that back into screen space, but then also dealing with the problem of the corners being different. Um, so we, we need to know like what quadrant you're in basically and select the best corners. Uh, is that right? So you could get all four corners. Um, hmm, or all, if it's eight corners, that's the problem with it. That's what we wanted to avoid is targeting eight corners. Um, so we, we could figure out like what one are you, you in? Probably have a truth table. Do a look, yeah, and then just we grab the right vector for it. Yeah, it'd be easy. So we'll, we'll just do this, right? Um, so it's something like offset direction, and that would literally just be off of a switch table, switch. You just do something like this, right? You don't need the ABS. All you do is you work out, um, let's call it V. You just say dot X greater than zero times two plus. And this way reduces the amount of switch state, or the amount of if statements maybe. Is that right? What would it do? Yeah, maybe an if statement is fine. I don't know if this is better. Let's just do it this way. It's a bit more crypt cryptic though. No, I guess it could be compiled to a jump table. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Well, on this on the GPU, you get a select instruction, right? Like a conditional move. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure which is better. It does probably doesn't matter. Um, so effectively. Um, if they're on, on the left, it's the first two, right? Because that will be zero um, for left. Um, so if it's on the left of the screen, you've got to flip the X.
Uh, this is top right of the screen, so it's that one. This is bottom right. Oh, we've bottom left. And then this is bottom right. So that solves that issue with the whole mirroring. Um, offset direction. Yep. So now you get your min-max, bring that all the way back into screen space, and that should bounce. Um, so we just need an extra division divided by the pixel near clip. Sorry, pixel size and near clip plane. And now you get into your screen space. And then you just need to offset. Min, max, and then you're just re literally returning min ssx min screen space y max screen space x max screen space y and that should be oh All right i think the offsets are a little bit wrong All these, all these specific numbers. Yeah, it could have been done with an if statement, to be fair. Effectively, I'm just figuring out which corner of the screen you're in. Um, are you in the top? Are you in the top right quadrant? Top left quadrant? Lower left quadrant? Lower right quadrant? And then we're calculating the offset to find the two most important corners. Um, yeah, because we'll grab the two most important corners. Um, zero seven five. That's a normalized. Right, these are a normalized vector, three D vector, right? The distances all add up to one. Oh, maybe not if you negate them. That should be if you negate them. Yeah, that's right. This has a uh, yeah square root of three. Yeah. Yep. That is correct. Um. So this one's saying it's on the left quadrant. And at the bottom, because it's true, it'd be one. So just got to flip the wires. Oh, come on, maybe not. Is that right? Yeah, because that'd be zero. So you're saying, hey, go to the left and go down. Yes, yeah, so that's lower left. So this one here is saying top left, top right. Oh yeah, bottom right, top right quadrant, that's it. Come on, I thought that was it. Yeah, I might just do a switch statement. This is, it's got a bit cryptic in it. So we'll just say if Um, either way, it's a little bit weird to read.
Um, right. So if you're to the right and if you are to the uh, going up your top right, which means your most important corner, I guess, for this case would be to the right and up. Yeah, I think you just follow it that way, isn't it? So if not, then you're going down. Your most important corner is up to the left, down to the left. Huh. The one up here has still got it, but the rest haven't. Um, What have I messed up with in, in this sort of offset thing? Camera to sphere plus offset. You bring him that all the way back into screen space and you have to offset by the half dimensions. That makes sense. Um, yeah, we didn't really do anything. Else really. Right, the min and max could be referring to the wrong thing. So in the top right, it's probably fine. But the min and max values might be... Yeah, like the max might have min elements to it and the... Um, so let's take the top left as an example. We're saying, let's take the top left as an example. We should be getting the most, the top, uh, the to uh, towards us, top left and far away, bottom right as the most important corners. The far away, bottom right is going to be the maximum. In a way. Yeah, so min max doesn't really make any sense. It's gonna be maximum across the X and Y, but not the Z. Um Yeah, so that's the reason why. Whereas that's kind of got min X Y, but it's got the Um Right. Yeah, I think if we change, okay, so if it's going to the left-hand side of the screen. Um, left-hand side of the screen with a positive Y. You still want it to be going to the right-hand side. And you still want it to be going up. Right, so maybe it might just be a check on the
um, you know, maybe you just take the two s the sides and you produce the min max out of it. I think. Um, so maybe instead you just call them sort of like A and B, and then you produce um, min equals min element. Um, I'm not min element, but min of A and B, and this will be max of A and B. I think that will get us what we want. Okay, we get an improvement here. This one seems close. The others seem off. Um, Do, 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 do. Top right. Uh, whereas if you're on the left, no, you're going down and go down to the right. Yep. If you are. On the left hand side of the screen, yep. Okay, it seems sensible. So why isn't the top right one working? Because the top right one was working. So we're trying to get the inner bounds here, and now we messed up. Uh, right, it's because... Right, it's because we did a negative Yeah, oh, and this is just wrong. Yes, this isn't right. Hmm. I wonder if you get the far if it would that's the same thing. Yeah, this min max is not right. Um, so you have each corner. So you have eight corners in 3D. There's another layer down below. This is top-down perspective. Um, we was just getting two most important corners and just getting the min-max. Of the X and Y. Right, and the Zs could probably be hard coded after that. Hmm. It's probably a more simple approach. Um, hmm, so we're trying to do exactly. Hmm. So we're trying to find the most inner bound box, which covers nothing but the inside of the sphere. So it doesn't go outside at all. Um, so in 3D, we've got eight corners of a bounding box, and we want to select probably the two most important corners. Um, so for a sphere, at least, <clears throat> the two most important corners, would they be the same ones? So you don't want to get like these two corners, right? That's not good, is it? You want to get the closest and up, right? Okay. And then you want to get the closest and 
to the right and the furthest and to the left. Yeah, and then furthest and to the back. So I think it's the same corners. Yeah. So the problem is we've got the different sides of the screen. So on the left, it's the opposite. And same on the bottom. It's the opposite in terms of, you know, opposite way around. So that's the problem we're trying to deal with here. So we did it by doing an absolute to root. So like the mirroring. We can still do the absolute, remember the sign. If you remember the sign, you can then know how to flip it, I think. Yep, that's probably the best way. So probably get back what we had. Um, right. So you get the absolute still, right? You get the most important, yeah, they get the, the min max. Then you just got to find a way to flip it, flip it back if you need to. So you, we could get the sign. So if it's on the left hand side or the bottom, you'll get a negative on that appropriate X or Y dimension. Um, so what you're saying is if you have a negative, oh wait, are you just applying the sign back? No, because the problem is, is the min could have been on the positive side and would it act, it just about, so you could have another sphere, which is, oh, you could have another sphere which is just on the positive on the right hand side but your min definitely goes into the negative so um and then your max so your min definitely goes into the negative and your max is still in the positive so you can't flip. So if you flipped that one back. Wait, wait, sorry. It was the other way around, wasn't it? I'm wondering if it's safe. Yeah, this one won't get flipped because it's was just about in the right hand side. That's the wrong one. On the if it's just about drawn, if it's mostly drawn into the left hand side, but just about overhangs to the right. Um, and you draw your, see it's just about on the left hand side, but the min and max are here. Yeah, so that would have been flipped to the other side. You would have calculated it on the other side or something. So it would have been like this with a different circle. Um, So I guess you do you do want to flip both, isn't it? Yeah, you flip them both. But that's no longer the min. That's no longer the max. Yeah, you want to flip them and then swap the min and max variables around in that case. Same with the Y, flipping down the Y, but if you're going diagonal down, I've got a, a better image for that on my Twitter. If you're going diagonal down here, um, you're swapping, you're flipping the min and max. Do you still, you're, fl you're flipping the max into negative and you're flipping the min into negative. And you still want to swap 
min and max around. So this will be the new max, that'll be the new min. So let's think about this one again. So you swap, so you flip the min. Yes, yeah, so if you flip any of them, you have to do a swap. Right? Because that'll be the new max. Well, it's not the new max bounds, you see. But you've got to recompute the min max um, appropriately. So if you flip it across the x, you've then got to swap the um, the y coordinates have to be swapped, so it will become like that between the min and max. Is that right? You swapped the x's. The x is now more negative on the max one. Um, so you need to swap the x's between the mins and the max, and that'll get your min down there and your max over there. Yep, that's how you do it. Okay, so I'm glad we sussed this out. So we want to retain the sign. So you do your sign, sign x, um, sign f32. So that gets us negative one or one. Um, yeah, screen space bounded box of sphere problem. Yep, one of them. We've done the alpha one in a very it appears in clustered lion. Ooh. Yeah, if someone sent me a, a link to, have you got any um, references to that Davros? Cool. We've just done a cheap 3D axis line bounding box to, um, to screen space, because that's all I could figure out. I tried the other ways, then I realized the field of view is different between the centers. Yeah, it's just, it's just a field of view causes it to separate yeah, it's it's a it's a weird, bit of a weird problem. Um, my math skills aren't good enough to handle it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So we 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 are we need to calculate the inner screen bounds because we're doing the occlusion. Um. So we're just doing that now, which is good. So. You need to flip, you need to apply the signs and then you swap based on the signs as well. So you say min, min dot x times equal sign x, min y sign y, max y. X, Y, some. Okay, good. So we apply that flip. Now we need to also swap elements around if the sign is negative, right? So if sign is less than zero, we need to say, um, just call it X or call it a T, TMP, um, min dot. Uh, min dot x equal max dot x max dot x equal tmp and then you do the same thing again wait I think it's this way um so that swaps those around and keeps the minimaxes minimaxes, right? Um, and now we just translate the whole bugger back into screen space. Which we did earlier. And then we should be able to do min screen space, min, screen space y so this just is a bounds right and hopefully that is the correct answer oh something slightly off i can feel it um you take the absolute okay so we get the sign of the original right 
we get the correct um We get the correct, you get the absolute the min max. You have the correct side of the min max. Um, we say, f you know, flip them if they need flipping. And that could just be in an if statement, really. Right. You could just do this. I don't know why I have to do a multiply. Um, so you say if the sign, if it's on the other side, we want to make the max x go negative. Oh, did I not apply it to both of them? No, I did, I did apply. You yeah, make the max x go negative. So we're swapping it and making them both go negative. So make them both go negative and do a swap. So your min y is now equal to the negative of max y. So you're saying this one Um, so you've got a max y right here and you're saying when you flip this one it becomes the negative of this and goes down there and that's your that's your min your min y no seems like Seems legit. For clustered line, I've seen some interesting ideas, like not actually using a screen space, but rather a screen space division in Z. Then camera space division in XY in each Z slice. Yeah, so you're talking about um, basically having frustum, frustum grid, like a frustum grid. Is that what you're thinking? You're saying, like, so you're you're cutting it up into multiple slices along Z as well, right? And it goes out in a sort of a um, something like this. Like binning in them per thrust like these, right? And then doing that up until the that sort of thing. As if you user will be wondering if you've seen this debate around AOS safety, which has recently yielded the government EO. Oh wow. That sounds pretty crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Sounds pretty nuts to me. The vertical diagonal lines in the screen space is still scaling them in some way. Oh, right. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Ah. Huh. Yeah. Yep. So that drawing a, a big, bigger and bigger rectangular box on the screen, essentially, but dividing it across. Yeah. Huh. 
Hmm. Interestingly. Yeah. Yeah, you see, I'm not sure if... Um, like, I'm not sure if AI gets solved with the current method that they're using. Like, having the big training. Having to train it like the way they're doing it. So I think it could it might only go so far, right? You might need more of a a designed and engineered system rather than like here's a bunch of data and just try and get something you want or you're looking for, right? Using them for games that are an extreme thing where you'll use for half here. Yeah. Well, you have all those tentacles in that, right? It's fine. People say deep learning is dead end, but it's your own capabilities that scare a lot of people. Yeah, it's doing some things, right? It's, you know, it's getting the, um, you know, it, it can do quite a good job at many things. But it, but what's interesting is it does yield very sort of similar similar characteristics to a human being where there's uncertainty and a sort of fogginess you know where we can't recall things 100 percent. and what computer is really good at doing is being absolute so you're essentially with the complex the way they're solving the complexity is lossy you know um so it's Instead of being lossless, right? Um, yeah. It would be interesting if we can get more of a lossless approach uh, for using different tech. Right, I think that's right. But it's just not ending up, even for the top right one, which should have been right, which should be the, the one which should definitely be correct. Um, um, huh. Oh, we've been, we've been offset it by the dims. That's why. Oh. Right. Top right one's fine. This one is not. Okay, so these ones are on the inside. Uh Okay. So the way it's swapping is a little bit off still. Um, so they're saying, hey, I need to swap. Whatever the max is, get back to this image. So, do, 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 do. so my min x or my minimum x, when I flip it, is equal to the maximum x, right, negated. That'd be down there. Right, down here. Seems all right. And then my maximum x is the min, whatever the min was, negated. Something fishy going on. Seems pretty sensible.
Right, it's the z-coordinate. The z-coordinate needs to be flipped if... So if you're the top right... Right. So if you're the top left... So when does the z-coordinate need to change? Um, between the min and the max. So your new min going to be here. Yeah, I wonder if you can do the flipping. Uh, the flipping might be better done in screen space after you've done the Z. That's probably the issue. Right, that's good. Okay, we're back to where we were with a more correct box. I don't know if you guys remember because it was a bit ago, but remember we mentioned this guy? It was, it was a little bit off, right? This corner was further down here, and this corner was further down here. Because we, we were translating the center position back into screen space, we had the min and max calculated as like a bounds that we brought all the way through into screen space as well. And it was enough of a difference to sort of drag, move it along, basically. Could probably explain that better, but that's that's it. So now we've got to change the the corners that we're targeting, right? We shouldn't be targeting the top. So let's go over to this this side is probably better. This is this is top right towards the camera, bottom left away from the camera. Instead, we need to be targeting the top. To get the inner bounds, what's the easiest way? Gu guaranteed inner bounds. See, it's not easy. I think we're just not going to get a good, a really good box at all. Um. Like, you can get a really good box there. That's a good box. Um, so, like, the problem is, is if you start using the other corners of the sphere, it's going to get really small quick, especially when it's distorted this heavy. And you can't just bring it in by this much. This one is, uh, let's try and see what this. Hmm. So that is your top left towards me or towards the camera, right? Um, bottom left. towards the camera. Maybe we use something like that. No, because then it can still go out of bounds. So maybe we have to just shrink the box. Um. In some way. So we can figure out how offset you are and then do something. See, it works fine for 2D.
Uh, but in 3D, you've got to get two corners. Maybe that's the issue. Because if I get the corners, um, this would be the lower left uh, towards the screen. So towards the screen, lower left, lower right, top right, top left. Far away from the screen, lower left, uh, sorry, top left, lower left, lower right, top right. So ideally, to do a, a box here, For this particular one, which doesn't make any sense, lower right, top left, and that will be guaranteed to be inside. But it's so small, and you're, it's just not even worth doing it. And it won't even map for stuff close to the camera. Because you would say lower right, and then like top left. Um, yeah, what did I say? Yeah. Um, Lower right near, top left far, and then it just is inverse. Maybe. No, because then it will it will invert at some point, and you'll get effectively nothing. So that you basically have to shrink the box, the min max. So that offset has to be sh shrunk. That we calculate um, based on how distorted you are. So how close you are to the top, to the right, or to the top, and we could probably cheese that in some way. Hey there, Gmos, how's it going? Um, yeah, using different corners for the bound seems like the only sensible way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know though. Maybe. I think we I think we can cheese it into a shrink. But it might not work with different field of views. But if so we'll just avoid doing different field of views for now. Yeah. So the shrink factor we've got the size of the screen. We've got we've got the size of the screen X Y. There's a field of view of like 120, for instance. And the field of view, it will, I guess it evenly s applies a, a sort of additional step. You know, um, so evenly it will sort of shoot, raise out. It's just, uh, eh. Right, maybe not. Yeah. Right. So the angle between see I don't know if this is fair. <laughs> it's such a hard problem sometimes. Yes, the angle between these two is the same. Which means that right, if the distance between those two is the same. Is that right? No, it's bigger at the near plane. Yeah, it's bigger at the near plane. Right. In the world, it's the same, but because it's a division, right, as you get closer and closer, it gets smaller and smaller. And more, di it gets, it's more different, I think. I think maybe, hard to tell these drawings, they're not precise enough. Yeah, it would make sense, right? So anyway, what, what what am I thinking from that? So, um, I'm trying to think if it's if it's linear, right? It's not linear because uh, if it's linear, you could probably take the. Uh, 
what can we use to shrink it by? Like how far is it is from the center along the X? Um, and then shrink the box. So we can get into near clip space. We can tell how far away from the right or something. And then we could probably shrink it by some factor. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hey there, Ransom. How's it going? I'm good. How about you? Sweet, good to hear. Do you want to yeah, not bad. Just a little bit tired. Not bit tired, but other than that, pretty good. Um, yeah, I was hoping to solve this problem a bit earlier, but you know, it's the way things go. Trying to work out the inner bound rectangle here. Um, but yeah. How's it going, Ransall? How you been? How you been? So we've got 1,028. Sorry, 1,280 pixels across the screen, which is divided by two is 640 pixels. So we could just see how many we need to shrink here. And if the number sort of makes sense, then we could probably figure out a sort of uh, algorithm for it, right? So, eh. Right. How many pixels are you? So I want you to go into about there right along the X. That's 40, about 44 pixels. Right, so given the size of the screen, that's on the X axis we're measuring. So given the size of the screen, well, half size of the screen, um, fourteen. what does that get you? It means, means every 14 pixels you want to shrink by a pixel um so we've got a field of view of 120 i think um i'm just trying to think how this sort of could map to that in some way but then i guess yeah i guess it's non-linear so if you move it closer it's not gonna you know if i move it 14 pixels to the right I doubt it's going to drop off by one pixel. Because um, the way this sort of morphs is different. Um, and also, if it's just along the X axis, it's going to be it's just going to be, you know, this doesn't need shrinking, basically, right? This when it's along the X and Y axis, it does need shrinking. Okay, so you've got X, Y axis. Um, ah, oh, Dumbledore, thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it, sir. Welcome to the, uh, welcome to the club. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, is it conservative? What does that mean exactly? It's got to be a banded box on the inside. Hey, Antix, playing those balls again. Yep. Yep. Damn straight. We just, just reduced the number to nine balls today. You know, 64,000 was just way too much for me to handle, you know. I've only got two hands. Um, so... Only when you go up and towards a corner. Do you need to shrink by something? So, um, you could probably shrink it evenly. Um, Right, so maybe you get the min of xy from from the middle, right? Min of xy offset. Um, 
And then, see this one's a smaller offset. Interesting. Yeah, of course, this one's smaller. So it's also the size of the object needs to be part of the equation as well. So you can get pixel at depth. I'm not sure how... We need to probably get hold of the radius in... Right, so you've got field of view about 120. Um, yeah. Hmm. So you can probably use like the, the tan or cosine of field of view or something. I'm not quite sure on the exact maths, but I'm just trying to figure out some thing we can at least just test out and see if it works and just cheese it. Um, so you probably want like something like that, cosine field of view or something. And then you probably want to get the um you might want to apply that to like the rate the the radius brought back into near clip space and then you probably want to take the x y and Yeah, right, let's see if we figure this out, a shrink factor. That's what we're going to call it. So we'll bring it to near clip space and we'll play around with... No, we don't need to, we just do a shrink factor. Mm. Um... You probably want to take the max... Um, the max x and y so get the min of max x and max y this is before we flip it to the other side um, so I'm doing good been playing all, all day and yesterday concert tomorrow crazy Ransor you must be getting so you must be quite tired but I'm sure you're enjoying yourself it's a lot of work, man. I'm not sure how you manage it. Playing at a concert. How long do you play for? Like, continuously. Um, string factor. So, we then probably want to get the radius brought back into screen space. Um... Well, the radius brought back into screen space just be min max x y divided by two, right? Um, half x uh, divided by two, right? So we've got that sort of number, because we kind of need to know how big is this thing. So this would then give us um So we've got sort of how far away is how this is like how distorted is it? Well this can tell us how distorted it is. This can tell us how big it needs to scale in a way because it's like the size of the the sphere you've got um so how can we bring these numbers into sensible ranges um so do you want screen box projections i'm taking world space a world space sphere and bringing it into screen space. Yep. So I'm just doing a bounding box because that's the easiest thing we can work with. Um, and we're doing the inner bounding box today, but I did do the outer one the other day. Um, but yeah, that's what we're the problem we're solving. So we're bringing it into near clip, and then we're taking that into screen space. Um, 
so this can tell you how far you are so then you just need to divide that by divide that by <clears throat> um, screen dims dot x screen dims dot y divided by two So that gives you a ratio between zero and one on how on how much you need to be. So the closer it is to one, the more it needs to get applied, right? So we should really revert that because this is a fact, we're trying to find a shrink fact that you're going to apply. So we'll do one take and invert it. So now we just need to work into here the size of it, right? The size of the, the sphere. So the maximum amount that you want to shrink based on, um, so you've got the, you kind of got the radius in screen space. That's on the X, why did it do X axis? Um, Right, so you've got the radius in, so when it's like, it's also to do with like the field of view as well. Um, so you've got like a radius of, so in this case, right, so that's about a third you need to bring it in Well, you need to bring it in by about a third there. Probably a third there as well. So, um, Okay, so it's just a third. So we might not need this at all if we're working in ratios. So based on the field of view, see what you've got, field of view 120. Um, the tan of that was, I think it was about one. No, it was 1.3 something, which ends up being about a third. See, I don't know if that makes any sense if we change the field of view, um, yeah, it, it, again, we're just fudging maths here. So we just say tan, I keep running trans because my stuff at work. Got this thing called a, uh, a trans, which is a transform. And it's just so easy to keep writing that. Um, tan F32. Um, all right, let's right, so that gets you. I <clears throat> see, I've got the number we can print it out. Actually, it's probably best. Um, I think it was 1.3 something. One point seven. Right, so if at one point seven, ideally we want at most a third to bring off. Right. Um see again we're completely fudging working backwards here into something, but it, you never know, it could be right. So ideally you've got like a ratio of about um so this will tell us 
zero if we're in the middle. Wait, one if we're in the middle. Did I want that? No. Yeah, zero if I'm in the middle. Why did I invert that? Zero if I'm in the middle, one if I'm at, if I'm at the edge. I'm saying it's about a third. There's a third when it's like near the end, end of the corner, so maybe it's probably about 1.4. Uh, sorry, uh, 0 0.4 um, when it's right at the end of the screen or something. So um, we've got a field of view of about, when we turn it at least, 1.73. So I'm just saying, how long is your concert there, Ransel? Also, ellipse ellipse is the classic. Right. Yeah, I don't really have the ellipse, but that's the radius, is it? There. Yeah. Do I need Do I need the area? Is that the area? Not sure. Um, yeah, so we want to shrink by about... Um, what do we want to shrink by? We want to shrink by a probably a quarter if you're all the way at the end of the screen and you probably want to shrink by more if the field of view is higher right so um so to get a quarter from 1.7 was it seven what seven three two So this number, right? Introducing a magic number. See, magic number probably means it's not scalable, but it might just do us for now. Then if we just apply that, um, so we minimax has an origin of zero zero right now. And this is where it changes. It changes it here when it applies this. Um, so we're just going to apply. So that shrink. Okay, so that gets you. Yeah, good, good, good. So let's just apply the shrink factor. Wait a minute. So one times zero point four. That will just um it's not really a shrink factor, is it? Um so you probably need to do one take at the end. Cool. So let's just apply it, see how well it works. Hopefully we can just move on from this. Um, right, we shrunk the box, that's for sure. Uh, this one went very far. Um, Right, so let's take, so this will be like, you know, um, oh, 
these are around right these are not oh, my days these are not in these have origin zero zero in the middle as opposed to having it at the bottom left so we're not getting the correct numbers what we want is the absolute the absolute of that divided by four wait that's the absolute in it no 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 in top right space. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been mapped. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what's that implicit equation for the edge of an ellipse? That's the implicit equation for the edge of an ellipse. X and Y free variables. Others are fixed. I'm not sure, but apparently sphere becomes perfect ellipse when perspective projected, yeah. Yeah, I think there's cases where it doesn't become ellipse, but yeah, it is basically an ellipse, as you can tell. An ellipse. So that's the plus equation for the edge of an ellipse. Oh, I'm not sure exactly what that means. <laughs> uh, my days. Am I shrinking it too much? Because you're shrinking both sides. That's the problem. Oh. You need to shrink it post as well. After you've flipped the signs and stuff. Oh, shoot. Yeah, you need to take the, so maybe this is correct, you seem to get the, um, let's call it half. Um, we need to get, yeah, subtract max from min, and then, Mall Okay. So something like this. We need to then take the add and take it away type of thing. So if you got a minimum, you're adding it to shrink it and take away for the max to shrink it. So you're taking this half. That's right. Okay. Something's happening. This one definitely looks closer to what we want. A bit too much. This one's buggered. Completely buggered. Um. So, why is the shrink factor of that y, of the one in the middle with like basically no x, how did that one, how did this one here with basically no x end up getting like that? Um, I 
Because I'm a nerd, I think it's a slightly more intuitive equation for an axis aligned ellipse. X, P, X, R, X. Right. Equal to one. What does that get you there, Cranston? So if the oh, if, so if the sphere is axis, sorry, if the ellipse is axis aligned, you'll get a box. I'm not sure. So we pass in something where, yes, yeah, so you do the min between these, right? You'll get like zero. Um, you get basically zero. Zero times whatever this is basically zero. One takes zero, one, shoot. Right, so now be like, save us at the edge 0 0.4. So the edge is like 0 0.4. Um, so 0 0.4 of, of that, then we're, yeah, that should be right. Okay, I think we found the correct fudge results. This is probably, you know, it's not the best. Definitely fudging, but it works. If we change diff if we change the parameters, if we change the field of view, for instance, it's probably going to be a bit. Um, whereas if we change the field of view, say we make that ninety. I'm changing two places. Right, something's already broken. Oh, wait. Yeah, because that's, that's some, another 120. There we go. Right, it's still kind of okay. I guess if we go higher, higher FOV, it might not work. But yeah, fudging, it fudges, which is good. Yeah, we've fudged it in a good way. Yeah. You know, if the game is a fixed field of view or within a range of field of view, I think fudging it is going to be fine. You know, because that's all, you know, if you're going to get good performance, you basically always fudge. You know, you don't do the perfect maths thing all the time. I think fudging is fine. I can't believe we just reverse engineered that and fudged it. But anyway, it works. So there we go, we've got our inner bound box. That took a lot more time, but it's much better than the else we could have got. All right. So I'm just going to quickly get a drink, but after that, I'm going to describe this plan here to do the occlusion. And we're going to see how far we get with this. Um, so we'll describe this plan literally in just a couple of minutes. Uh, we're going to build up some textures and, uh, just, yeah, we'll, we'll do some drawings to describe this and everything. Right, BLV.
Right, welcome back everybody. So, let's quickly just go over what we current like what, why do we need an occlusion buffer, right? Um, so, okay, an occlusion buffer is effectively a way to know, to roughly know if something has been occluded, like is been, like if you've got a sphere and let's draw it. Right, you got a sphere here. If I've got another sphere here, this sphere occludes this one. So we don't we sh don't have to bother trying to ray trace this thing because this one is in the way, right? Um, but so we will always the in the occlusion buffer we will always. If something says it is occluded, it's definitely occluded. If something says it's not occluded, it doesn't mean it's definitely not occluded, right? Um, because it's a rough guess, right? See this box we've just done? This box we've just made here? It's a rough guess of the coverage of the sphere, right? It's not perfect. And it's a way we're going to use this to we're going to use this to sort of, um, you know, we're going to use this information to, uh, um, we're going to use this information to essentially color in this occlude, occlusion buffer. Um, hope, you know, in the future, we might find a better way to achieve this. Um, but for now, we're just going to use bounding boxes and you'll see why in a second. Um, so that's why we need an occlusion buff. Um, that's what an occlusion buffer basically is. Um, so our, the current way we render is we split things into screen tiles. Uh, let's go to our UI shared screen tiles. Let's go to main. Right. So this is just some UI. Uh, we bin stuff in. The same way for UI and spheres. We bin them into tiles. As you see, there's a lot of tiles. We probably want to have a list of around 64 spheres per tile. So we essentially multi-thread. We go over every single sphere. Each thread gets a sphere. And it gets the screen bounds, like the outer bounds. It's a different bounding box. And bins it in all of the possible um, tiles it could be in. Right. Every single time it does this, it's doing multiple multiple spheres at once. So the overlap of something made purely out of spheres is going to be very high, meaning the atomic atomic min. Sorry, sorry. The atomic mac. Uh, sorry, atomic um, atomic add. That's what we're using to as to essentially allocate it a position inside the tile, inside the array that each tile has. Um, essentially, we're getting a lot of overlaps ha like happening at the same time. And um, that could be quite bad for performance because if you have one compute unit which does an atomic add to the same place as an another compute unit does an atomic add, they have to communicate over this sort of they have to communicate over the, the buses to sort of figure out which one gets the, which one gets, you know, um, it has to go through the L, the L1 and L2, I believe. So it's a bit slow. I'm not quite sure about that, but it's, I think that's right. Like, so that you potentially get a lot of slowdown if you're at the same memory location as a different compute unit. So there's ways to sort of make that go faster, but what we want to try and do. So effectively, if you see the results, um, when we, so let's change the view. Yeah. Shoot. Nearly there, one more switch. Um, This one. One more switch. Um, 
There we go. So this is 64,000 spheres. And see here this tile binning, right? See how spiky this is. It goes from 0 0.4 ms sometimes. That's when it's when there's no overlapping atomic adds, right? And if they all if there's quite a lot of overlaps, it goes to about 1.2 ms. So as you can tell, that's a big spike. And it's it's spiky always, right? It just doesn't know I guess there's some at some average that it kind of goes along the most, but it's not not ideal. I did want it to kind of be somewhat consistent um, as well, and also it's kind of quite high anyway. It's about for 64,000 of these, it's about a millisecond. Ideally, I want less. Um, and also, we will end up overflowing our tiles. Each tile has 64, well, actually has 256 right now, um, spheres per tile. And then we basically, our ray tracer does a eight by eight grid, and it will, each thread gets a pixel in that eight by eight grid and does a ray trace to all of those spheres inside that array for, the, for that tile. So each pixel belongs to a tile and it can look at all those spheres in the tile and just ray trace against those 256 spheres. And that ends up about four MS. We was trying to optimize it last stream by sourcing the array of spheres um, and trying to early out from the pixel shader, which is probably gonna be a benefit but it's still not going to fix the underlying issue where we're getting too many spheres. Um, so this is what we're trying to fix with the occlusion buffer. So let's just go to the code quick, just to show some of the things I was talking about. Um, so this is the, 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 which, the code which bins the, the spheres, right gets the outer screen bounds of the sphere. It's kind of a, a rough guess. Right, but it's definitely outside of a sphere. Um, we snap it to a to a tile, and we iterate over all the tiles, and we do an atomic add. So this is where the occlusion buffer comes in. We go if right. We literally just do this. We say, wait a minute. Um, do we want to say if the sphere is occluded? or tile. Wait a minute. No, you're just saying if the sphere, yeah, sorry, you're saying if the sphere is occluded, yeah. So what you would just be doing is you'd just be doing something where you say, if the sphere, like, Something like this, right? If it is occluded, then return early. And if, or you know, obviously it might, or maybe you get a different sphere or something. We need to figure something out where, uh, maybe we can optimize it further, but the, the gist is, right, you can basically um, early out from this function. And if all threads, early out, then it ends quickly. The issue is we're doing 32 threads in lockstep. So we might have to reorganize the shader a bit, but this is the gist, right? If it is occluded, return, and you won't have to do these atomic adds in the same memory locations. It, it will reduce those. And so hopefully there's less communication going on. Um, there's other ways of maybe solving it by sorting it but I don't know, it just sounds like too much work. So now we need to build these occlusion buffers or how these occlusion buffers are gonna work. So essentially these are the steps we've just talked about, right? Dispatch all spheres, each thread gets a sphere and bins it into a tile, checks if it's occluded, right? Um, so how are we gonna do the occlusion buffer? So you can think of the occlusion buffer as literally like a depth buffer, right? Um, so essentially it's just going to store a depth value at the pixel so this one will be a depth value of whatever this well it's not really what this is right um so we've got the box okay so all of these pixels here do a nice blue or something 
all of these pixels here are going to get the depth of whatever the furthest point is. So the furthest point is here. And that's what we'll store in there. The reason why we don't store the center or the furthest away is purely because you could have different spheres with, um, you know, here's a, another sphere, right? Center position here, maximum position here. Um, if you still store the maximum position, this thing would be a, um, Wait a minute, do you want to store the max? No, yeah, yeah, sorry, you don't want to store the max because you could occlude yourself, maybe? Yeah, let's think about this, actually. So if you have another sphere where its center position is here and it's bigger, it's ginormous. Maybe it's not there, but you know what I mean. Center position is here or something, whatever. Um, you... Your maximum position is here. Um, yeah, I think in 2D it's easier to, to convince yourself that this might work, but I think in 3D it might not. Um, hmm. So if you st stored the maximum in the depth in the seclusion buffer, and then you checked the occlusion at these pixels. Um, this would be behind the maximum point. So the thing about using the the furthest away against the closest when you're checking, but maybe you can just use the two closest points. We'll try the two closest and see how that works. But we might have to do the other way around. Right, so I think we'll store the... Mm. Oh no, this is the reason why we didn't store the closest. Because it's a sphere. And a sphere... has a different depth. Depending... Yeah, so we just go, right, you know what, we'll just do the, minim the minimum. And that way it solves the problem. Yeah, that's the reason why. Yeah. Okay. So essentially what we do is we just store the the furthest away depth inside this occlusion buffer. And then we, when we go to draw another sphere, we say is the sphere so if the sphere is here, we check its closest depth against the occlusion buffer, and if it, it is closer, then it gets drawn. If the sphere is the sphere's max is further away, this does not get drawn. It, you know, and if it overlaps here like this, this one's still going to get drawn. So this is where it's not really a perfect thing; it's a rough guess, right? So now we know, how, you know, what gets encoded in there. Um, let's talk about how we're going to minimize. So we dispatch over all spheres and each thread calculates the inner axis line bounding box, which we just calculated, right? Of the sphere in screen space and atomic mins, atomic mins, the, now let's read this as the depth pixels, um, to the occlusion buffer texture thing, right? Now, the problem is with that method is you're basically going to have the same problem because you'll be doing an atomic min, right? Which means you'll get very noisy results when spheres start to overlap a lot. Um, and then it'd be di different across each frame because it's not, to, it's not uh, the same every frame, right? So you'll essentially scan over every pixel, do an atomic min for the max depth that you found. And, you know, there could be other spheres doing this at the same time for the same pixels, and you'll be fighting for the atomic min. 
I think at least. Although I would think you could probably optimize that since you're not reusing the value locally, but I don't know. So you'd be fighting for these pixels. To, so to avoid fighting for these, so there's two problems here, right? One, you're dropping down to a pixel and writing all, every pixel out where, where we was just doing tiles, which was eight by eight pixels earlier, right? But now we're going to be changing it to um, only writing a single pixel instead and we'll have different layers so these layers are MIP levels right so you can imagine you've got your full resolution right so let's just do a, a pyramid right a, a MIP pyramid so you've got your basically one pixel occlusion occlusion texture like your two pixel occlusion texture, your four pixel occlusion texture, and so on, until you reach the resolution of your screen, right? This is very poor, poorly drawn, by the way. It's not to scale. These are meant to be double of each of each other, but they're clearly not double, right? Um, so just take this with a grain of salt. So you your depth pyramid, right, where this is meant to be like a 2D image. Um, so essentially, if you're, you can imagine if you've got a, a sphere, this is, this is the screen and you've got a sphere, which covers the whole screen. This only needs to do a single pixel, right? Two, MIP level, whatever this one is, nine or whatever, right? Just needs to color in that one pixel and that's it. Um, if we have it where it's covering probably just over half of the screen right or just over a quarter of the screen because that'll be a two split into a two by two it'll go to mip eight whatever that one is right um and only write a single pixel okay and so on and so forth right um, and as you can tell we're getting a bit of again it's a we're missing it's a rough guess, right? We're losing, we're losing, um, you know, say if your box, the box you drew was that or something, you'll be missing technically some pixels here from it. Um, so again, it's a rough guess. It's a rough idea, but this will be good enough because the amount of spheres that we're drawing um, and the amount of sphere layers we've got, right? Because if you remember this, um, two seconds. Remember this? See how many like layers you've got going into the z-axis? Like we, like although it's a, a rough guess, we're, we're going to cover basically everything up, and it'll be fine. Um, so the ones in the back, like a few layers back, are definitely going to get included and skipped. So that'd be cool. Um, and that's the main problem we're dealing with. So now the other problem of, so that's how we write it quickly. Um, but how do we deal with the problem where we just want to say if occluded, right? And it's that to be quick. So you want that to be a one pixel read, right? You don't want to have to read 20 pixels or more and then, um, you, like, you, um, you, you might have like, uh, I don't know, a bunch of MIP levels. You, um, you probably don't want to read every MIP level and get the sort of pixel, you know, the different depths, right, for each of those, and then get the max of that every time. Instead, you want to pre-cache that information into the textures themselves. So we've got some two, step, two steps here, which basically propagate the depths from the high MIP to the low MIP, and then from the high MIP to the low MIP. So for the one that wrote to the, the say this is a full screen, and this wrote to here, this depth will get propagated all the way down the layers in some step, uh, which we're gonna run. And this will be, this will be, should be really quick because we're not doing any atomics here. We're, we're subdividing it into some, essentially when you sort of like um, create a MIP map, but we're doing some min and max basically. When we're 
propagating the min the depths through the layers of the of the occlusion buffer um and every thread essentially owns a small region of of pixels so there's no um contention there no fighting between what values we get right so that's the basic idea there um i guess has anyone got any questions around that um before we get started really well, i guess i'll just get started if anyone has any questions feel free to ask away um what are we doing now okay so we've got our inner bounds thing now which is super great we now need to create our textures so let's create those um so we need our occlusion buffer or occlusion let's call it texture it's a bit better of a name and then we need our occlusion MIPS base ID. So again, we need to target specific MIP levels and you have to use texture views for that. So we're going to pre, we're going to just create a bunch of texture views. that will be one after the other in as an ID. So it should be easy, easy, easily be able to address that inside the shaders. So let's just create our textures quick. So I, I've got screen resizing, but I've not implemented it in the graphics yet. So we're just going to be lazy. There's still problems to solve actually now that we do this, uh, but it should be fine. So here's our occlusion, te occlusion texture. So we should be able to debug view this as well. Um, it should be very easy just to view this uh, full screen basically. All the different MIP levels, which would be nice. Um, we can also open up, open up in a, a program to view it as well. Um, so we just need a depth, right? So we could just do it with one. See, this is what's interesting is we could just encode it as a 16 bit. Let's just do a float 32. It's not gonna be the best. Um, let's just do it as a float. We could probably get better speeds if we encode it as a 16 bit integer though. Wait a minute, you need to do an atomic. So it needs to be an integer anyway. Right, we'll do a, a U16, uh, 16 uint. And I got that. I will right, we'll make it. Um, let's hop into all this complication just to compute the correct lighting value. Uh, I guess it's to do it fast. That's that's the main reason, right? Bytes per pixel, two bytes. Right, let's go to Vulcan. Like, we're trying to do real-time graphics, right? Um, and also if you do like an offline render of like movies and that you kind of want it to go fast as well But you need you want uh, pres you, want, you want high precision though, right? Okay, so that should be the texture format sorted out So where's the graphics at? Here we go Okay, so we'll do the screen temp width hard-coded Okay, so there's the MIPS, they're there. So the MIPS will need to be, so I need to work out the number of MIPS. Um, uh, 
occlusion. Yeah, they will store here because it would just be easy to have access to. So I believe you do something like the highest set bit. So you need to basically get uh, get the power of two. Like what power of two is it? it like in, in log two form, right? So it'd be something like um, um, most significant bit index. Wait, uh, find is it? What do I call it again? Uh, forget my my maths library. Um, lib h maths. Probably just for scalar, right? Ah, oh, bit MSB. Excellent. So what's the index of the most significant bit? So that'll get you a power of two, basically. And you're gonna take the max of your width height. Uh, max U32. See the most significant of that. So if you have two, right, say if your max is two, um, yeah, so it's, we're creating like, like a full MIP chain down to like one by one pixel, right? Um, so if you've got a width and height max of two, uh, two pixels, say, that would be um, your most significant bit index would be two. Um, if it's one, Oh no, your most significant bit index would be one because it's an index. So if it's if the max is one, it would be zero plus one, then you one MIP. Good. Yeah, and then if it's three, your most significant bit would be index one still, right? Because three is that, right? And your index is you know index zero, index one. And then plus one, so that's two MIPS. Wait. Yep, yeah, that's right. That's it. So that number goes there. Cool. So that gives you your occlusion texture there. Now we just need to create, now we literally just need to create that many texture views. So we'll just do a for loop. Um, base MIP level zero to this. Okay. And then we'll essentially just, uh, so we'll probably, Yeah, we need to get the first one, you see. All right, let's just write this out. Texture view. Um, we want this occlusion texture. Uh, we Then we want the base MIP, base MIP, then zero, that'll automatically calculate the MIP levels for us. Then zero, zero for the array layers because we don't care about those. Um, so then we want to get the resource ID. 
And then we literally just want to say, right, if base MIP level equals zero, we're then going to store in here res ID. Excellent. So now that's set up the textures. Um, so we're doing a full resolution one, right? I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, we could possibly get a speed improvement by literally skipping out on the highest quality MIP. Um, so yeah, that's something to be aware of, right? Okay, so now we've got our textures. Now we can write the first shader. So the first shader is, go back to the notes. Dun, dun, dun. Um, okay, so we've done this one, right? Create the occlusion texture full screen of, of N MIP levels, done. Let, let's run it just to check. Ta -da. It works. So the next one is dispatch over all spheres. Each thread gets an inner AABB of the sphere in screen space, atomic mins, a single depth pixel to a MIP level where the AABB is less than two pixels, right? That's what we saw earlier, right? We, as we went over earlier here, we select the correct MIP level and write a single pixel. So that's a very easy shader to write. Let's see how quickly we can do this. So this one is going to be called um, occlusion. So, right, so we've got basically three shaders we're writing. We can write occlusion right, sphere occlusion right, we'll call it. Um, and then we need propagate um back propagate and forward propagate something like that um so you would then do occlusion right bc so there's our constants so we're just gonna go and write all those in which is going to be super nice Okay, so what do we need here? We need all these spheres, because we're going over all the spheres. We also need a texture. We need to be able to literally just write. Wait, it's atomic, isn't it? So let's read right. Uh, to a texture, 2D. And this is going to be the base MIP. Wait, it's a float, th it's a U16, isn't it? Shoot, U32. Wait, where did U in? Is there a U norm? When's the appropriate time to change MIP levels? When you get close to the object, so you get better resolution. Um, yeah, so you can use MIP levels for basically whatever you want, but when you're sampling a texture, it automatically calculates the MIP level based on the the derivative of your screen pixel, uh, the, the rate of change for a screen pixel. So you've got your, you got two by two pixel that you're rendering. You do a sample, right? It knows the UV in this, for this pixel, this pixel, and this pixel, and this one. It basically gets the difference across the X and Y between those two. And it, from that information alone, it can work out what the MIP level is, right? So it knows which resolution to select, basically. So the further away it is, the lower resolution, right? The further away the pixel is, or the, the yeah, further away it is from the screen, the lower resolution you want. And the reason why you want that is because imagine if you have a very, imagine if you have a texture, right? So when you're sampling from a texture, again, it only takes a two by two, a two by two region, and it does a bilinear sample, unless you do nearest, right? 
it does it does a bilinear sample and gets you the color for like this exact coordinate by interpolating between this one this one and this one based on your uv right if your uv says i'm here it gets these four values and interpolates to get this right but if you just do nearest right it will just get this one so you can see a problem right if your if your texture is too high detailed right you're going to skip over massive pixels right when you just move the screen a little bit uh something like that and you interpolate between is that right wait maybe that's wrong wait let me take that back for a sec uh if your screen yeah um hmm Yeah, so UV will be um yeah, so this is in texture space. Yeah, this is the problem. If this is in texture space, then you map that to a screen pixel. Now imagine this screen pixel, right? Okay. What you really want to do to get the correct result is you want to interpolate between a monster amount of pixels inside your texture, right? Yeah. So that's a lot of interpolation to do. So to so you obviously can't do this. So the way to solve the problem is with MIP levels. So essentially, you have a, a higher resolution, a lower re resolution texture, where it's literally. So let's just draw over it. Where imagine if you've just got. A lower resolution texture that it can just take these four pixels and do the interpolation between these four and that's 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 basically why I use MIP levels um, for sampling right but yeah it's uh yeah it's one of those things where you just need it's one of those things we just need to understand what the problem is and you need to read yeah read about it it's very hard to tell just by using functions in glsl or hsl and seeing you know um understanding that basically you need to read like some tutorial to get that information um right so here's our occlusion texture occlusion mips base base ID. So we'll be able to calculate the MIP just by adding to it and just, just getting it basically. Um, um, okay. And that's all we need. Is it? You probably need the screen dimensions. You don't need the tile dims. That's not a thing. All right. Let's go ham. So first thing we need is the sphere. The next thing we need is the dimensions, right? The inner inner bounds, this guy. All right, it's got a min max XYZ W type thing, right? Uh, we need a ray. We need our buddy ray um which is camera origin so we should really pass this information in somehow i've not got a moving camera yet so there we go uh pixel size at near clip again i need the Field of view. That needs to be put somewhere. I haven't done that yet. So there we go. So now we've got the bounce. Um wait, how are we getting the sphere index? Um here. 
So we'll just go over all the spheres like, like that basically, right? 32 threads at a time, early out. So if you're, um, so you're at your bounds in screen space. The first check is if you're out of bounds. So if bounds.x is um so you got a min max so if your x is greater than or equal to bc output dims dot x um or the y is greater than that one or the max is less, right? So it's something like less than zero. Or if the Z, which would be the max is less than zero, or if the W, which is max Y is less than zero, what you've got is an out of bounds um, You've got yourself an out of bounds sphere, so you might as well not bother putting it in the occlusion. It, it won't it won't go on the texture at all, right? So just get rid of that one. Um, okay, so now we need to select the correct occlusion texture. The, the one so we can just write a single pixel. So to do this, um, so remember if we're the size of, so we need to get the minimum, oh, what do we need to do? Um, so MIB zero is the highest resolution. And so we might need to know, um, yeah, so MIB0 is the highest resolution. So if our box is the size of a pixel, or if it's less than the size of a pixel, we probably also want to ignore it because this we can't guarantee, right? So this one is saying um, sphere is out of texture bounds or yeah, of screen bounds, right? Um, texture or like um, sphere inner bounds is outside, of, okay? And the other one is saying well, if the bounds Z take bounds X, um, is less than one, right? If it's exactly one, right? Um, we probably want, do we want to snap it to a pixel? See, this is another problem as well. It's like you've got to be overlapping exactly a pixel because you could you could span a pixel, but so here's the other problem. You can have a pixel. You've got your bounds, and it span it's 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 actually a pixel width, um, but it doesn't actually fully go over your pixel, right? And it's a very rare case that you'd make it that it would actually go exactly over. So if it's a little bit bigger than a pixel, it has the potential to actually be going over your thing more and more. Um, things vanish as they go far over the horizon. Yeah, you're further than the far plane, my friend. 
Yeah, my eyesight is terrible. I got bad eyesight. My eyesight isn't good. Because my, my focal length is like the distance to the screen, like all day, you know. Um, I better get out of the house anymore. Like when I used to live in my old place, I used to go out walks all the time, but now not so much. Um, so yeah, I need to, he's got to more, and touch, you know, have a feel of the earth and touch some grass, you know. But yeah, someday. Um, yeah, so if our occlusion, if our box, it's got to actually fully overlap a pixel. But I don't know if I want to do that calculation now before we reduce the, the MIP. Um, sorry, what's the word? Before we change, calculate the MIP texture, right? So you can't really say if you're less than a... So we could sort of round you to the nearest, right? So you seal, yeah, so maybe you go do this, right? Let's just write it out. So you say x equals seal um, bounds x, bounds y. So that's the min. And the max, right, is this one here, yeah? So you sort of like... You will map it to a pixel or many pixels, right? Depending on how big it is on the screen. And it'll snap exactly around a pixel or multiple pixels. So is that what we want? I think so. So let's just carry on and we'll keep that in our minds. So we say, if the bounds is less than a pixel on either dimension, we have, you know, our, you know, sphere in a bounds is less than a pixel. So, you know, no point running it to the occlusion buffer because it just doesn't, it doesn't guarantee that it, is occluding that whole pixel, so there's no point writing it. Um, so now we need to calculate the occlusion MIP level. So we can get the width and the height. So you want it to go exactly to a pixel. So you need to select the minimum bounds, min x, y. So you get your sort of uh, width. Height. Some of that. Um, and you want to select your sort of like, you know, your minimum sort of size. So it's min between width and height. And then with this number, you, um, we should be working in integers now, realistically. Um, so, ex, um, Y. All right. So yeah, I guess you say equal to zero. All right. So you've got yourself a a size of a number of pixels that you're definitely ta taking. Uh, uh, taking up here on the screen. Um, so if you're taking up one pixel, you want to be on MIP 
zero. If you're taking up two pixels, you're going to be on map one. If you're taking up four pixels, you want to be on map two and so on, right? Powers of two here. So we do the same trick as we did earlier, where we select the MIP level. Well, we did the number of MIPs, right? So it's bit MSB, nice and quick operation um, on the size, plus one. So if this is one, this will return zero because the highest set bit is index zero. Um, if if size is two, it's index one, right? And then we add one, so that's the MIP level, right? Um, oh, we don't want to add one. I just realized, because, yeah, okay. Okay. So we can now get our texture. So here's our occlusion texture. And this is literally just going to be BC occlusion. Um, we just had it base ID plus MIP level, right? Should work because it's just an index, right? It's, it's all all of them are next to each other, and then it will do the lookup, get the texture. Um, so now we can do the right. So we should do an atomic. So we need to get some depth value. There's something we need is depth value. Um, let me write the atomic thing. We also need to get the uh, coordinates as well. So let's get the depth. So given the sphere, uh, we've got a, um, we want to do a ray to a camera origin. Oh. So here is when you really need to cap, like we're definitely right into the texture here. So we'll calculate the depth value now. So we get a depth to the sphere, but remember it's got to be further along by sphere radius. So if we added sphere radius to the. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just length it. So you get the, the depth. Depth is equal to length f32 times three. So from the camera to the sphere plus um, sphere radius. And that'll get us to the back of the sphere. Because remember that drawing we did? We. So we've got this line here, which is camera to sphere. We take the length of that, but we want the depth of here. And the reason why I want the depth of here is because we're just in an uh, it's a sphere, right? And we run into, into an occlusion buffer where we want to say every like this sphere definitely occludes everything up to here, right? It just definitely occludes here. It's a bit of a like we're just, just trying to do a single pixel right onto the texture, right? So we just get in the minimum and just roll in with that. Um, so if we look at yeah, so there's our depth value. So we want to do an atomic min. F the, uh, you can't do a float 32. And shoot. We haven't got float 16 support added. Um, hmm. I just realized it's a storage texture. Hmm. We might have to use a U32. Yeah, we're going to use a U32 for today because I can't. Uh, 
kind of closed all the files, didn't we? So it's um. Right, so we want to go into GFX. Right, 16 UN, that's it. Uh, GPU. Like, this is going to be slower, but it's kind of good because we know we can optimize it further. Um, GPU Vulcan. Thirty two, thirty two. Uh, GP dot H. All right. So Right, now we know it's going to work. Now, I think there's a thing called like a texture pixel. Uh, where is it? I did this in the... Um... Oh, I might have to get the latest version of HCC in here. Samples. Right. Uh, we need to bring the latest version of HTC over. Just recompile it. Which means I have to do it on Windows as well and test out on Windows. Um, so we get a new release build. Let's get the release package. Kind of the wrong version here, which one that change? Mm. Boom, that's today in it. Oh yeah. So let's go and get all that in the right place. Um so going into game event engine. The pi HC, so I need a binary. I also want to overwrite the um the intrinsics. Thank you, you. So I added a new uh third pi HC intrinsics texture intrinsics I did a way to get a texture pointer texture address right address of read write right address of read write texture 2d of u32 that's the bugger So we want the texture pointer for this at a certain coordinate. We'll work at that coordinate. Um, and then we want to min the depth value on it. And that's basically all we want to keep doing, right? We just need to work out the coordinate. So if you go up, so that'll be, sh it might just be shift right. Um, so, You might have just to take, so it might just be U32 times 2 uh, coordinate X shift right MIP level, Y shift right MIP level, right? Divide by, you know, it's just dividing by 2 more and more and more. Um, so if we're on MIP level 0, we divide by, we divide by nothing. Right, we, if we on MIP level one, we divide by two. If we're on MIP level three, or on MIP level two, we divide by four. MIP level three, we divide by eight, and so on. Right, I think that's it. 
Okay. Um... So... Let's quickly run over the maths though. I just want to double check. So if you're right into pixel, so you've got a some space. Go self a texture. Oh my days. It's... Right. Go self a texture. It's four by three pixels. You're gonna get um yeah so you'll get three mip levels right mip level zero would be this mip level two would be this mip level one would be that in a sense right um so when you're mapping this coordinate, right? Hey, I'm on MIP level one. Divide by two for me. So if you divide by two, it's 1.5. Right, round it down to here, excellent. Divide by two, down to here, excellent, right? Um. Yep, so th this division stuff is fine. And you're the lower left. Wait, 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 wait. So I'm thinking, do you want to take... So if you ha span multiple areas, say if it spans two pixels, that's more realis realistic, right? It, sp it spans two pixels. Which one? Which one is it? We should add another row. Okay, so let's say we do these two. Um, so you're, you know, if you divide if you divide the text by two, your you know your text will be this big, a two by two, right? And then a one by one. So this is MIP level zero in a sense. This is MIP level one. Wait, sorry, MIP level zero, the whole thing. MIP level one, MIP level two. Um, so we want to target these two pixels. Because you're spanning two pixels and you want to write a single one, we want to go to the higher MIP or we want to go to MIP level one. So which one do you divide? So this is the X, Y position. If we divided that by... Um, hmm. So zero, zero, one, one, two, two. Divide two by two gets you one. So that's not right, is it, actually? Yeah, no, oh, my days. The thing I just did earlier that wasn't right, okay. So this is two, two. But it could, okay. So we might have to add one before we do the, do, do the division. So if we make this three, three, and do the division, it will then be 1.5, rounded down to zero. So you get the round down. Um, so maybe add, right. It's good that we're thinking this through. So if we did this top right one, see, that's another thing. You could be spanning tons of pixels. Um, and the lower left would still be fine, I think. Yes, because you can think of this, like if this was another text, the MIP level texture, uh, this, 
you can think of this area. Wait a minute. Sorry, you don't want to end up down here. All right, let's draw this different texture so it makes more sense. I'm not sort of right. So this is the MIP level one. This MIP level zero is MIP level one. This area here is the same as this, this pixel here. You can imagine it as, as that, right? Um, so to get, yeah, so if we do two divided by, yeah, just do two divided by one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, two divided by two, that'll get you one. So it'll get you into here. Okay, so this was right. Um, yeah. That makes sense. Right, so let's just double check the shader and then we'll hook it all up and we'll do some debugging and uh, see how it looks. So sphere, Index, yep. Camera position. Wait, should we see the compiles first? Go S. Let's call it S. Um, does not support add for U32 and that. Right. Cast it to U32. And then add. Okay. Sweet. So that compiles. Um, so you get your position, uh, you just got your, your parameters for the camera, hard-coded. Uh, sphere, get the inner bounds for me, please. Thank you. If you're outside the screen bounds, right, so the X is greater than the, or equal to that, yep. If the Y is greater than or equal to that, yes. Uh, the end of the screen, yes. If the end of the y or end x is less than or equal to zero if the end y is less than or equal to zero then they're definitely off the screen um then we round up the bottom left round down the top right of the bounds for the sphere um if the sphere is less than a pixel then we return, yep. Ideally, we should do a safety check to say if the thing is inside out, but maybe it's fine. Um, see the min of width and height that gets you the size. Um, yeah, that gets you the minimum pixel boundary that it takes up like the, the, the square boundary basically so you could have a very wide sphere for some reason so this sphere could just be like really wide like that and you've got a very sort of like more wide you know it takes up more pixels across than it does the height but we'll just use this uh we'll just make it square right we'll just say hey it takes up two pixels um Yeah, this is a good point. You want it to say, which pixels will it be? Um, so if you min it and you cut off two of them, do you really just want to be saying, write these two back? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which ones it is. It's just quicker to do it that way. Good. Uh, select the MIP level. That's correct. We worked that one out. Uh, calculate the depth. Yep, that's correct. We worked that one out. That's fine. This is okay. This is okay, that's okay, sweet. So we should kind of also clear our tech, 
our textures to some maximum value as well. I did kind of forget about that. We need we need a pass that does probably eight by eight. Um, occlusion clear. Um, we want to write. Uh, just get the occlusion texture um, and you'll probably get the occlusion dims um, so this one will do the classic if I'm out of bounds a simple check somewhere, right? Um, where's the check? Why doesn't the ray tracer check if it's out of bounds? Oh, it's down here. Whoops. Okay. Um, Yep, so if we go out of bounds, we'll uh, not do anything. And we're just going to clear the texture. So it's just a store texture 2D E32. We're storing in BC texture E chord. Um, and we're storing a value of infinity. Wait. It's encoded as a U32. We didn't do the the sort of mapping there, did we? Um, so we'll just do U32 max. Now we've got a we've got to have some form of like constant where it's just going to say what is that sort of occlusion occlusion. Um, depth precision or not it's not really precision it's kind of like what what do you what do you sort of um occlusion depth scale do you scale up the floating point by some amount um yeah so let's just say it's a thousand probably be more um so we're going to turn that into a, an integer depth f depth u um Oh shoot, why did I think it was a, like that? Okay. Radio. So we need to run these shaders now. So let's just start on the clear. Um, and we'll view those textures in RenderDoc. And then we'll uh, go from there, really. Um, so let's go to GFX. Okay. So we're going to go over all of those MIPS and we're just going to dispatch some clears. So where is it at? So just before the tiling, binning. Oh shoot, I didn't sort out the uh, sync code. Should be quite easy though. Um. What's the sync code you're going to do? Yeah, it's not going to track it correctly. Uh, let's just quickly get over there. Uh, GPU.c. We added texture views. 
So when you say sync resource, uh, we need to say if right, where is it at? Um, resource get okay. So we need to do a simple thing where we just say resource uh, res D if resource um, alias resource is not null, then we need to say re um, yeah, uh, resource ID equals this one. So we don't do sub resource tracking. Uh, do sub resource um, sync code tracking um, as it is a lot more effort to track individual or at the granularity. So I can't even spell that word, but it's a good word. Granularity. Oh, I can spell it. Look at me go. Granularity of um, MIP levels and array layers. Right, it's absolutely crazy to do that. It's a lot of work. Hey, I'm Kev Payne. Welcome. I know, right? Look at me go. Leveled up. I can English. I can English, bro. Right, so that will do the sync code tracking. It's very basic sync code tracking. We just, yeah, very basic. I think you can go back to the VOD channel and probably just see what we did for that. If you're interested, there's a VOD channel. Um, right. So... Oh, and also if people are interested, just as a quick plug, there is a, uh, if you want to get access to the code, uh, you can support via Ko-Fi or Twitch. Uh, obviously Ko-Fi is much nicer for me because um, Twitch takes 50%. Um, but yeah, um, and then just follow the link to the Discord. It has all the instructions there. You can get access to the code and have a play of it on your system on Linux or Windows on AMD or NVIDIA. Um, but yeah. Plug. Yeah, I've been here for a bit trying to grasp everything. Yep. It's uh we'll be able to visualize something very soon. Very soon. But yeah, I did I did think about this a bit. Hopefully I explained it right. No Intel support. Um my custom C compiler doesn't support Intel because Intel wants you to be explicit about the formats, your texture formats in shaders. I'm hoping they don't do this anymore because it's really annoying. Um, so I've seen on later Intel Arc GPUs that it doesn't ha need it, but I'm still questioning whether they actually are fully committed to that route or not. Um, it involves my shader compiler being even more complicated than it needs to be and i i want to target like the future of gp programming um so i'm happy to heavily simplify something for that cost which is a shame i wish it didn't have to be that way all right occlusion clear Texture, um, occlusion, MIP plus base MIP level. Um, like that. Then yep, that's good. Then the dimensions is um, shit. Um, 
Um, I should store them in a ver. Mm, no. Yeah, so we'll just do um, temp shift right basement level. Yeah. Alrighty, yo. So now we want to synchronize on the resource. We are read and writing, read and writing to the whole of this. Okay. Technically, these can all run in parallel. So you only need the first one to synchronize, put the barrier down. The rest of them don't need to synchronize because they can all technically run in parallel because it runs different MIP levels. All right. So let's check that works out. Uh, occlusion clear. Sphere occlusion clear. We're dispatching across width height divided by eight, this thing. And then occlusion clear. Radio, looking good. So if we hit run on that, fingers crossed the stream doesn't crash. This fingers crossed. Right. Oh, I know what the problem is. We we'll, gotta we'll let it run. It's taking forever to process the Vulcan validation layers through a ADDR two line and give me a proper nice assertion. I nearly forgot about that. It's such a bugger of a thing. Right, validation error. If P code points to GLSL code. Shoot. Texel pointer. I've got a U32, man. Is the points GSL code? Then it must use the GSL code written. All the living right, is this just trying to support um Um, right, this is specifically for GLSL. Okay, which we're not using to output proper spear V. Um, so image format to be one of those guys. Damn this thing. Check the spec. See, we can get around this by just not using a texture, but it's just... Do we need caching? Do we need 2D caching? We might not need 2D caching, so we could just use a buffer. Maybe. But then you have MIP levels uh, built in. So maybe we didn't need MIPs anyway. And just did one massive buffer and just index into the buffer instead. 
which might be the only option. Um, right, where is it? So I'm not sure if it mentions it in the restrictions here. Maybe it's for Vulcan. No, Vulcan has this requirement. Maybe. Yeah, because Spear V would have complained, but in a Vulcan environment. Yep, that's it. It's better to image format to be one of these guys. And mine is in ignore or something like that. We could probably try and infer. Right, let's check the image formats. We could probably try and infer the format in the compiler. But then it would just be flat out wrong. Uh, this thing. Yeah, this is why I don't want to support in the... in the compiler. Because it just, it just makes all the user space code a lot, a lot worse. Do, 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 do. So we could probably get around this issue by just using a buffer instead. Because uh, we can get pointers to buffers just fine. And when it comes to the occlusion, you probably don't care about 2D caching. Because it's just a single pixel you're reading. Um, yeah, so let's, let's switch to a buffer then. That sucks. So if you switch to a buffer, you've got to do it's nice using the text because it just does, does the maths for you. Ah, these things. So if you did like a buffer. Yeah. So occlusion buffer. So imagine if you write, um, what we're we doing exactly, we're doing it. So it's width times height. Then you've got to also do for every single MIP level as well. So what's the way you can calculate that? Um, so, so if you've got like, I don't know, so there's two MIP levels, it's that plus a half of that, right? Plus another half of that. Um, do, 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 do. There's a really easy way to calculate it, but it, I forget, it just dawns on me there. Plus a half, I think it is, plus half of width. Because if you look at like a MIP texture view, what you'll see is they fit nice and snug. Uh, where is the bugger? Here. This is not the best example, but you can put that one up there, that one up there, 
and you can sort of build yes over width ah oh, just making a buffer is just really annoying there's probably an easy way to calculate it though so you might have to have a, a list of offsets and translate it from 2d to 3d oh sorry from three from two it's kind of three-dimensional in a way down to a 1d coordinate um right 64 MIP levels um i'm not sure if it's 64 right why you only 64 MIP levels You don't have to use a linear buffer, you don't have to waste space. I think you can calculate the total space required with a geometric series. Yeah. I know it's still a full hoop, but I don't know what geometric series is. Um, geometric. Oh, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, one of these boys. Something like that. Maybe. Yeah, this is something, isn't it? Half plus a quarter plus of that. Yeah, then you can work out some offsets into the buffer and then you do the 1D, you do the 2D to 1D map. Maybe there's a way to calculate the offsets very quickly as well with this. Yeah, of course you can, because this is, yeah. Right, yeah, because obviously you can just do that. I don't like the for each version. Well, I fudged it. What is this? Holy moly. Does it rotate? Yeah, so is this got to be axis aligned? Even goes negative as well, look at that. No rotation yet, fair play. Pretty cool though. But yeah, if I could map it into a screen ellipse with rotation, then this would be perfect. But I fudged it right now. Doesn't do perspective though. That's true. Well, ideally... Oh yeah, it's not really an ellipse, is it? Because it gets... It, that this gets more... He like one side would be more heavier than the other. Or more squished in than the other or something like that. But yeah. That's very true. Why have I become a tabs person? I didn't realize Geometry Series was just a for like the E means like a loop, right? Yeah, I can just do a loop. I, I, get, I get that. Okay, I thought there's a way to do it with some smart. There's a smart way of doing it, but there's not. Um, all right. Okay. 
Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to leave it. There is, I'm thinking. Oh, excellent. Off topic question. When are we getting ready to ship the game? Custom engine like this. How do you get the confidence to run all the different PC hardware out there? Currently in that situation myself. Hey, Mr. Shelby. Um, so. First of all, if you're in that situation, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, that's a good achievement already. Um, but yeah, it's difficult, right? The, the best way to solve that problem is to run it on the actual hardware. Um, <clears throat> and that's probably the only solution um you can actually you know get 100 percent results on so you probably if you're talking about like a, a gpu you probably want to get one nvidia card one amd card and one intel card for instance right now you also want to probably get one of each generation so you only want to get like one you know Maxwell, NVIDIA GPU, one, you know, all the different generations, the different chipsets. Um, and that's probably the best way to solve it, but it's very expensive. Um, the, the other solution is you put a bunch of good debugging information in and you basically do a you have people test it on their own hardware somehow and you have ways of getting debug information back that can help you diagnose the problem but that is not very easy to solve the problem because you don't have access to the hardware um so yeah it's very difficult Yeah, without a loop. Yeah, that's it, Sully. Without a loop. Is there a way to do it? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Geometric sum without loop. Because I saw a bunch of E's everywhere, and I was like, these guys are looping. Ah, oh, there it is. Maybe. Ah, uh, what's, what's an R? N is Nargin. What is a Nargin? I was on Wikipedia, maybe I scroll past it. I know how many MIP levels I'm using. I know how many MIPs I'm using. Well, sorry, the computer knows. <clears throat> it's a simple 2D OpenGL game, not much fancy graphics going on, but still not confident at all. Right. So because you've done a 2D game OpenGL, you're probably going to support a lot of hardware out there anyway and you're probably not going to use some like put it this way you're probably not using a very niche feature right uh, but it's still it's still worth doing some form of testing so you're probably better off going with the second option which was talk um find people who you can test your game and maybe you pay them right and get them to get some stats and uh you know do that um that's probably your best bet but if you start seeing a bunch of crashes um then maybe it's best you invest in some hardware um
Yeah. Um, yeah, the phone is right here. Oh, it's just that one. Sum of n terms up to and including the r. Excellent. Just like the other one, this one. So, easy peasy, easy peasy. So we want to calculate the number of pixels. Oh, shoot. That's to the power, isn't it? No. Oh, they ate you to the powers. Yeah, it's got power though. Um, you kind of need a loop for that, unless there's a power of two. Well, less. Yeah. Um. So if we made this a power of two, then it'd just be a shift left. Yeah, is it run up start? Maybe so. Yeah, maybe it's so bad. Is there another place where number of pixels is going to be used and it's pre-calculated? We also, yeah, the thing is if it's an expression, it means we don't have to store an array of offsets because I need, need an offset into the texture. Um, but if we, if we make it a power of two, then I can just shift it, right? That can work. Um, If R is one half, how is R one half? What does R mean again? I thought R meant. What is R? Yeah, if R is one half, can you just do one shift left, you know, whatever the N number is, and then just divide it by two or something? Yeah, N take one, yeah. Um... Right, I need to go back to here again. What is R? Uh, 
Um, yeah, so the first one is, is a pixel of one. It's one pixel, isn't it? Plus two, plus four. <laughs> yeah, this is not this is not English. Yeah. Um, so what, what is, oh, that's the question. Like, I don't get it. What, what does a half mean? If it's 0 0.5, right? So 0 0.5, it doesn't make any sense adding 0 0.5. That's what I'm confused about. Wouldn't it be one? One plus one to the power of two. Um, that doesn't make any sense, does it? Okay. Yeah, so one plus one plus zero plus yeah, I don't get it. I don't get what R would be. R is the common ratio that multiplies the previous term. Get the next. R is a half. Right, a half times a half. Right, um, so zero point two five plus half times half times half. Is that right? I'll look again. Right, I guess that's R then. Right. So if if W is a half. Half times a half. Yeah, but this doesn't make it easier, right? Plus. Oh, divided by two. I see it now. No, I don't. So the power of is the first MIP level. That's the first MIP level. Oh, okay. So you're reducing that. Or two. Okay, right, so in terms of pixels, yeah, width and the height, yeah, it's width times height, yeah, we've got it. So, So if you had a number which was mm. 
Yeah, but why do you do it to the power? Why did you do it to power T? That's the spell I understand. If this is your first MIP level, right, you've done width times height, that is the number of pixels. So if you do width times height to the power of two, like, and you're doing that n times, surely that's wrong? That's the bit I'm confused about. For if width and height are equal to W, right, so they're square. Got it, so square texture. So like 2048 by 2048, you do 2048, right. So 2048, right, dub, okay. So W squared is width, is essentially width times height. Got it. Okay, I see it now. Oh, Egotist, thank you so much for the sub. Appreciate it, sir. Appreciate it. Yep, yeah, got it. So it's just W, it's just obviously, right, so this is where a square texture comes in best. Got it. Um, you, so you would do 0 0.5, As you have scale. Hmm. Right, so you're saying basically 2048 plus, plus, right, sorry, 2048 times 2048, yep, plus 1024 times 1024 plus, you know, 512 plus 512, right? That's the series, okay? Got it. So then you're saying, right, now the next thing, I've got it, level up. It's quite nice that the W factors out so you get the fact that it's only dependent on the number of MIPS one, which is probably seal log. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's killed by chat. Oh, sorry. Right, so then when you say a half, times 2048. Why is it times in it? The maths is obscured by the maths, by the way. What? I'm confused. So I'm unsure about what goes to the power. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I understand it to be fair. But yeah, so I guess, mm, I don't know. Maybe it's best just to use a for loop and compute some offsets and then I have to store some offsets and give that to the shader. Which it would be nice if there's an easy maths expression that can calculate the offset. There must be a way. Right. Yeah, so I think off stream I'll think about this. See if there's a nice way to optimize this mass expression. Maybe we have to waste space by uh, making the width and height a power of two. Um, we'll see. Is 
Synchron. Is equal to one slash one. Right, I see it. Okay. Wait, so n equals still log. Huh? Well, you're saying you can just do it with... So convert it to log two. It was still, yeah, yeah, so I think what you're saying there, that calculates the number of MIPS. Yeah, we, we've already got that. That is here. We've got that there. Um, each term. Yeah. You just got to see if there's a good way to do this quickly, that's all. So that's a half to the power of n. Okay, so plug on. Right, fair play. Well, so you're literally just saying do that. But then you, I've got to use power, isn't it? Not sure I want to use power, to be honest. Because this is the problem with it, right? Because that's the problem in code, is that how are you going to do that? And you're not even taking into account the number of like the actual dimensions. Oh, okay. Yeah, but what's the precision of it as well? Is log two plus one. Um, for debug print. Yeah, I'm not sure if this will work. But yeah, it's, you're not punching in the, the width and height here, though. Okay, you're saying it's the number of MIPS. Right, I see. Mm. So it's working from the tail end. Yeah, I might pre-compute a buffer. Maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure how many MIPS I have exactly, but I think it's... Yeah, I should probably only have a handful. Yeah. I'll think about this off stream, see how it goes. Um... Right, let's find some to raid. Um, 
So our next be on on Thursday, um, which will be 8 p.m. 8 p.m. EMT. So, right. So in the next stream, we'll just be working on the occlusion stuff again. So we'll, we'll make an occlusion buffer instead, instead of a texture because of the restrictions we have. Um, and then we'll test all that out. I'll also have a think to see if there's a way we can support the texture. Uh, okay, see so is anyone we can read. Ah, oh, that's Ravis Romero, eh? Um, Optimization PAL is exponent 2. Mm -hmm. Where well, the latter is much faster. Fair play, I'll write that down. One divided by one, two. Thank you so much for that, Cranston. Appreciate it, sir. Oh, no, thank you for the raid. Sorry, I'm widget. we've literally raided Mr. Romero. Thank you so much for the raid. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'll see you on a future stream. Right. Thanks, guys. Much love. Bye-bye.